Well, today we're going to start by learning just a little bit about our very much unappreciated sense of touch. Now, the five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, if you were to ask yourselves, which sense would you never, ever, ever definitely want to live without? Most people would say something like hearing or sight, but have you ever really thought what it would be like to live without the sense of touch? All right, in order to do this, let's all do a little experiment together, okay? It's hard for me to have a microphone and a clicker, but let's all raise your hands and without looking, try and touch your fingertips above your head, like so. Awesome. It took a few tries, but you can do it, right? Well, you can do it with our seeing, and this is all thanks to the sense of touch. The sense of touch is unbelievably complicated and an inherent part of our daily lives. It is comprised of sensors, a lot of different sensors, that sense things like temperature <coughs> and pain, but also forces and vibrations and the way we interpret those signals in our brain. In the task you just did, when you raised your hand up, you felt the forces in your muscles, the stretch of your skin, and finally, skin-to-skin -skin contact, all of which guided you to be able to accomplish this task without even looking. When we're out in the cold and we're trying to button up our jacket or zip it up, it's really awkward, right? Well, funnily enough, this is not because your muscles are cold. It's because the cold knocks out some of the mechanoreceptors or touch sensors in your skin, which give you contact information, making it really hard to manipulate anything with your fingers. So the sense of touch is really important because it is the sense that allows us to move around and interact with our environment without really having to think about it. The science and technology of haptics studies this sense of touch and how we use it to be able to interact with devices in a more profound way. This type of haptic technology will work by recording a user's motion, for example, through a robotic device, which is seen right there, and then transmits that motion to a virtual world. In this example, the virtual world is just going to be a virtual teapot. And then in turn, the virtual world transmits back to the device what should happen when the cursor touches that teapot. So for this example, we can think, OK, the teapot should be solid. So if the cursor touches it, the user should feel a force and not be able to penetrate that teapot. And then the haptic device, the little robot that you see there, has motors, which are able to transmit that force back to the user. So what's really cool is that the user can be moving around the haptic device and then feeling a teapot, even though there's no physical teapot there. Now, this doesn't have to be just about virtual worlds, though. If we substitute the virtual teapot for a robotic arm, now what happens is that you can be controlling a robot through this haptic device and feeling what the robot is feeling. And since the way we control our own bodies is also by feeling, it is a much more natural and easier way to control a device. One very cool application of controlling remote devices is in robot-assisted surgery. Now, this robot shown here is a clinically available surgical robot called the Da Vinci Surgical System. And the way it works is that a doctor will sit at a console and look through a monitor at what the robot is doing, and then control the robot with some grippers. In this type of procedure, the robot cannot act autonomously. There's, there has to be a surgeon in the loop because it's just too complicated and the robot just can't do it by himself. And now, just before it gets screaming, that's just foam. It was made in my lab. It's not tissue. Um, and uh, so these robots allow a surgeon to be able um, to perform surgeries much less invasively and more accurately. So a robot can get deep inside a patient without cutting big holes we are going to be closing them. And then the surgeon, in turn, can do a way better job of controlling the robot if they can get the sense of touch feedback. It is, however, really hard to give that sense of touch feedback. It's hard to give a sense of telepresence so that you feel as if you're directly manipulating the patient and not through a robot. And a lot of the projects in my lab, the one I work, not my lab, the one I work in at Stanford, work on dealing with exactly this problem. Well, but now that we've learned about the sense of touch and how amazing it is, I want to talk about the application that makes me most excited, which is education. So we know that on average, when you're reading something, you will have about a 10% retention rate. When you're hearing something, about 26% retention rate. When you're seeing something, about 30% retention rate. When you're seeing and hearing something, about 50% retention rate. When you're explaining something, about 70% retention rate. But what about what you feel? Well, turns out 
that learning, moving, and haptics is really interconnected in the brain. One crazy cool example of this is that neuroscientists and education researchers have shown that when you're doing a math calculation in your brain, you actually see a representation of your fingers, even when you're not using your fingers to count. Which is why we're trying to understand the relationship between haptics and learning. We hypothesize that a haptic virtual environment might really aid a student in learning concepts that are very difficult to grasp by just seeing an equation. And this is why we created this little haptic robot. Um, it's called Hapkit, and it, the way it works is just a one degree of freedom device, and when you move it around, you can feel different forces, and thus program different virtual environments. It's open source, so all of the instructions on how to build it are online, and it's 3D printed, so you can manufacture it yourself. Using Hapkit, a student can interact with the computer and feel different physical simulations. In this, oh, yeah, in this physical simulation shown right here, a student can interact with concepts about springs. The idea is that you'll use the mouse to create different types of springs, such as single springs, springs in series, and springs in parallel, and you can change the stiffnesses of those springs. And then using HackKit, you can feel what you just created. Another really cool um, application of haptics for learning is in linking two abstract concepts together. So in this program right here, we're trying to link the concepts of trigonometry, their graph, and the, unit, the relationship with the unit circle. And so a student will be able to uh, make different trigonometric functions, change their amplitude, their frequency, and then through HapKit, you can explore the function and feel the changes you have just made. We have seen some promising results in students learning how to graph these functions after they have felt them, as well as understand the relationship with the unit circle. We have used HackKit in different virtual environments, ranging from massive open online courses, to middle school classes, to undergraduate and graduate courses, with very positive results. Our, our dream is to find new ways of teaching science so that everybody can understand it. We would really like it if we could have in the future online interactive classrooms and be able to distribute quality education to the most remote corners of the earth. Thank you.